welcome to this edition of my Tesla Timeout series, where this is actually a quick review, a two-year update review on my 2020 Tesla Model 3 Long Range. Yes, it makes its own noises. Uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to tune in on this Tesla Timeout, and I, there's a lot of reviews out there, so I'm not going to go into a long, drawn-out review of my Model 3. There's more Model 3 material that you could watch than it'll take your whole life to watch. There's so much stuff out there, folks. What I want to really just give you is my quick feedback on the vehicle over these uh, over two years. It's been over two years now, and I have hit over 50,000 kilometers, so you can factor that down to what it is in mileage. So pretty good uh, kilometers for even during COVID driving and things like that, you know, we're putting, putting miles on this vehicle. I've done a trip to the East Coast and back. So I've done some long distance driving. I do some drives to Detroit here and there, stuff like that. So I am getting this car going around and using it. This is our daily driver for me and my family. We have one other vehicle that our daughter has, which uh, she uses and sometimes my wife uses, but this is it everywhere we go together whether it's just for tasks around town or on a road trip, we take this car. I have no problems in finding charging for this, but uh, really what I wanna do is just talk about how the car has been. How has it been treating me? Have it had any issues, any major issues, minor issues? What's it been like? I'm not going to show you every single accessory that I put on this car because this video will be way too long. You can check out my Tesla timeout series to see all the different accessories, but you will see it's got a lot of bling to it, a lot of uh, personalization that I've done. But let me get into the details about the vehicle. All right, so as I give you a 360 view of my vehicle, I'll just give you some of the lowdown. So I have not had any major issues at all with this vehicle. It has been, let me zoom out a bit. It's been fantastic. Um, in the two years, uh, in fact, September, mid-September was two years, so I'm almost into end of October here. So just over two years. I haven't had anything major on this at all. Um, one thing that I had when I took delivery is I had a wind, nose, a wind noise from the driver's side window. You could really hear it on the highway. It was predominant. It was higher than it should have been, in my opinion, for a EV, a quiet car. So I took it in the Tesla. They said they fixed it. They gave me a loaner that day. Um, so I was only out for the day. Came back, said they fixed it. But it still didn't go away, especially on windy days when you're on the highway and you hear that wind blowing. I could still hear it coming from somewhere in that top A-pillar area where the glass meets the A-pillar or somewhere in there. So had mobile service come back, or sorry, made another call, took it to Mississauga service, uh, spent a couple of, about an hour there, I guess. And but basically what they did is they took apart the vehicle, the door, uh, inside of the door, and reseated the window. And that has seemed to solve the problem. Now, once in a while, I get a little bit, in my opinion, a little bit noisier from this area than I think it should be. But it's, you have, you have to have the ears for it, folks. It's really, most 99% of people don't notice it. And I have my music going quite a lot. So uh, that's that. So I'm not worried about it. It's much better than it was. So that was the only issue that I had to take it to Tesla for any servicing other than routine maintenance. I've had the brakes service twice now. I've had the wheels, of course, rotate a wheel swap for the winters, which I'll be getting done soon as well as we get into November here. And as you can see, all the accessories that I've done that are non-standard, uh, you know, from the spoiler to the rear um, synchronizing uh, lights there to the uh, chrome delete which I did myself uh, to the pillar delete to the roof rack to the side stripes the door handles um, marker covers wheel hubcaps um, you go on and on you watch my test of timeout videos you'll see lots of stuff there uh, the mark of course my gypsy danger logo on the front hood if you're not sure what that means google it you'll find pacific rim my recently um, flat, uh, synchronizing turn signals, which I absolutely love, and the fog lights, they're great, great, great. Um, so a lot of stuff to the car. Um, look in the inside. Again, I just you know, put in the mats, um, so it's relatively clean looking. Uh, I do try to keep it clean as I have it, but you know, other than accessorizing it, uh, doing some uh, you know, uh, wood trim, uh, film there, uh, 3M kind of film, the covers for that. I, I like the wood dash look, so I kind of try to keep that calm wood look within the vehicle. Um, it's kind of hard to see because the sun's really coming out now. The back seat, again. I try to keep it relatively clean, but I'm not I'm not cleaning this car every week. We're putting it through car wash and detailing it every week. It's once every couple of months. Um, the summertime, maybe once every three or four weeks, I'll get out there and detail it a bit. But this is it. I just try to keep it clean and normal driving. Um, stuff. So, you know, you'll again, you'll notice lots of little, uh, little accessories here and there. 
a bit of great car though just a fantastic car um of course got the power trunk as well option from Canada drive tesla canada or i can uh, tesla market excuse me canada you can go check him out and then uh, cyril of course wheeler wheeler automotive installed it for me um so that works great it's a it's an absolute must um the trunk is kind of high some people like my wife are a little short it's hard to close that trunk so the power trunk makes a huge difference it's the frunk I could live without as a power. I don't use it that much, but the trunk is an absolute necessity. So um, definitely recommend that. Uh, of course, liners and all the protection material that you want to do. But, you know, I don't think you need to go overboard on these cars. Like I haven't PPF the whole thing. I just did the bumper. That was it. Um, and even it's, even after the first year, it was already chipped and, and, and stuff. So I'm driving this car till it dies. Hopefully I can get 10 years out of this, uh, out of this vehicle. Um, we'll see. Let me go inside for a sec here. There we go. Close the door. And see in the inside. So you see my new steering wheel, of course. Just put that cover. I bought one of these little tiny mini HUD things from China. And this is a nice one. It's a very small one. It's a simple one. It shows you your battery percentage when you're parked. And then when you go, it'll put it into um, the gear. And then once you start moving, it'll show you the speeds there. There we go. Like that. I'm gonna stop it for a sec. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, just something at night, just a little bit, just to see the speed a little easier, even though I have the Atlas tilt mount, as you guys know, which I absolutely love. Highly recommend if you're going to get any tilt and swivel mount for the 3 or the Y, do not get the knockoffs. Get the Atlas mount. That You pay more money, but it's worth it. It's a much better build quality, and you get the strain relief on the wire, and I can't express how critical that is that over time of going back and forth and moving it, you could... The connector where the wire goes into at the back of the screen could work itself loose and crack uh, some of the soldering or break. And then it's a $1,200 or $600 or whatever screen repair. Even if you buy a used one on eBay, it's several hundred dollars. So, And you watch my video to install it. If you check out my Tesla timeout where I installed the Atlas mount, you'll see I have a little, cheat, little trick where you don't even have to unplug the cable to install it. It's a really easy fix, really easy thing, and it takes the stress out of the install 100% away. It's an easy install not knowing you don't have to try to fumble and plug the uh, unplug the cable that's at the back of this because it is challenging and it and, and it's nerve-wracking so check out that video but otherwise as you can see i've got you know some joa accessories i love their their charger here um again i'm not going to show you everything at their hub underneath there uh, lots of cubby holders and stuff here uh, it's just it's a really nice comfortable car and the interior is still holding up after a couple of years again i'm not treating this i'm just cleaning it with some cleaner so natural cleaners that don't damage it. Um, I just took off my sunshade uh, for the summer part that I have over the drivers uh, because it's getting winter, so it's getting cooler now. Uh, and that's it. Uh, I put this little thing here, which is a sunglass holder. You can find these on AliExpress. Uh, and I like it because I have clip-ons. I don't have regular sunglasses. Uh, it's just a nice spot to hold them and find them, and it doesn't really take away from anything. I can still see the mirror fine and uh, gets me everything. So... Again, the whole purpose of this part of showing the interior is just the fit and finish is holding up. I don't have any squeaks and rattles. Uh, I don't have anything breaking. Nothing's snapped off. Nothing's broke. I get in and use this car as I would normally. So it's just been a fantastic vehicle. Um, overall to drive, I've had no issues. Range, I'm still getting on a full charge, about 480 kilometers of range. This is after two years. If I ju juice it up to 100 at the, at the right nice temperatures, I'm getting about 480. It's showing. Now, you're not going to really get that, but in the city, you get really close. And the highway, it's no problem to get 350 to 400 kilometer range. Uh, when it gets colder, then yeah, probably the low 300s, but which is still adequate enough. And with plentiful supercharging everywhere, I've road tripped the car and I have no problem to get in and go anywhere. Anywhere within the supercharger network, which is most of southern Canada and most of the urbanized and populous areas of the U.S., there are some dead zones, but for the most part, you can go anywhere on supercharging. So that's one of the continued value adds that Tesla has. Now that we're done looking at the car, let me show you my numbers as far as what some of the occurring costs have been so you can get an idea of what these things cost to operate. Okay, so what I want to show you is my cost, because this is one of the most important things about EV ownership in general. Um, but specifically for this Model 3 that I'm doing my two-year two review on. So as you can see, I've kept a mileage log 
of uh, my miles or kilometers driven since new, since I picked it up September 14, 2022 present, uh, present being end of October, so October 31st of this year. And as you can see, my total, all the totals here. So what I'm gonna focus on really are the, the numbers that mean something. So as you can see, 95, 98% of my, uh, or 90 plus percent of my charging is at home. Right. And, and as we know, home charging is where you get the savings. Right. That's the significant savings is in home charging. So you can see here I've done fifty one thousand kilometers um, and it's cost me nine hundred and eighty six dollars to do that. So you can convert that to miles and this is Canadian dollars. So you could convert that to U.S. or other country to get an idea of how many miles or kilometers I've driven in your currency. But this is just under $1,000 to do over 50,000 kilometers in the just over two years. And I keep a pretty accurate log because Tesla, there's a, a couple of trip um, uh, trip sensor settings that you can do. One I call monthly and I reset it every month. So it tells me how many kilometers I've driven, how much power I've consumed um, and the efficiency. And the efficiency being the watt hours per kilometer, which is down here um, in this element here, as you can see. So we've got our, our total kilometers, um, what the efficiency is, 165 or uh, per kilometer watt hours per kilometer, or that's 266 watt hours per mile converted, or 16.5 per 100, or 26.6 per 100, depending on how you want to look at that. So when I t show people this, they are very much astounded because they're saying, wow, it only cost you a thousand bucks to do that kind of kilometers. Boy, that would have cost me, you know, uh, six times as much, eight times as much, whatever, you know, three to four thousand a year is what I'm seeing for fuel costs on, on most people on an average midsize sedan like this one is, even if you got 45 miles a gallon. Um, you know, you're going to see some significant costs with cost the cost of fuel. So there's a significant savings already just in the fuel costs. Right, and here's how I calculate my home charging costs here. Um, as you can see, um, just under a thousand bucks, nine seventy three for home charging. I have hardly do any fast charging, and I did go on a trip last year. We we did a um, uh, a thirty five hundred kilometer trip, uh, about three thousand kilometers, fourteen hundred out, fourteen hundred back. We went from here to Fredericton and back, and I supercharged the whole way. The reason it's showing zero here is because I had free supercharged credits left over from some referrals before Tesla caught, uh, closed the referral program. So I used that entire trip cost me nothing on fuel because I supercharged everywhere. And then when we stayed at our relative's place in New Brunswick, I plugged into their 110 and just trickle charged for the week that while we were there. Um, and if I needed to go supercharging, there was one five minutes away. So it was nice and handy. So that's why my DC fast charging or, or public fast charging, anything I have to pay for is, is a low amount because again, I've only, um, uh, I've had it for free. Now, even if I had to pay for that trip for supercharging, which would have been the most um, that I would have had to pay, would have been anywhere from about 125 to 150 bucks. So that's all this total would have gone up by, let's say even 200 if you want to be really heavy on it. So $1,100, let's say, or, or something like that, still far less significant than uh, an internal combustion vehicle, right? And another important factor here is the amount of CO2 that I've saved by, by this, by driving an all electric, a zero emission vehicle in the time that I've owned it. And that's based on uh, this statement here where a Model 3 produces about 91 grams of CO2 per kilometer. Um, so utilizing that formula I put in here, I get the idea of, uh, I know that I've, saved 4,680 kilograms of CO2 from going into the atmosphere, uh, almost 4,700 kilograms. Uh, so doing my part to help with the environment. So you have some other stuff. Now, the other aspect to look at for cost of ownership is maintenance. And here's my maintenance record. Okay, I've spent just under $800 in just over two years of maintenance. Uh, one of these was this maintenance, which, which is uh, after the first year, the first summer, I had it, I had this odor, um, which is fairly common for the Model 3s, maybe the Model Ys, the, the way moisture collects in the HVAC. Um, if, you don't, if you don't run the heat a little bit in the summer, even to dry it out, it can collect and give a little bit of an odor, almost like a rotten egg smell, very light. So I had Tesla Mobile Service come and clean it 
change the air filters as well, the cabin air filters, and, and spray the foam stuff. So it was a service call, which I, I now can do myself. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay that money again to do it. It's a very easy thing to do. I just wasn't sure. They came, showed me what it was, and said, next time you can do it yourself. This is what you get, and so forth. So pretty nice of them. So I could have eliminated you know, $165 out of that. Um, I've got a cost of wiper blades in here because that's all I've done, plus put some windshield washer fluid in it. Um, I do have a second set of tires, which I pot, but that's not part of maintenance. That's just for winter driving. You need winter tires. So I do have that. And then I've had two brake services done. I had an initial one by Tesla, uh, which was uh, a flush and a service. And then I had the brake service, which is the lube done by um, uh, done by my good friend Cyril at Cyril Wheeler. So it's about uh, almost half the cost of having Tesla do it. So I had him do it recently. They say every year or 20,000 kilometers, and I'm putting those kind of kilometers on. So I'll do it on a every year, year or so basis. It's not a big deal. So my total maintenance is that $800. So you could figure out where, what yours could be. Now, if you had a brand new vehicle that and all you were doing was oil changes, and air filters, and cabin air filters, then your maintenance is probably going to be a lot, to be honest, a lot lower than this because oil changes are, let's say, roughly 100 bucks if you're using go to the dealer, putting in... Um, you know, a good, a good oil. Um, and you know, they always charge a bit more, obviously a hundred bucks. So that's maybe a couple hundred bucks for oil changes in two years. Uh, with that kind of kilometers, usually you would do it every 10 to 12,000 kilometers. You do an oil change. So you do maybe three or four, maybe five. That's probably a bit too much. Maybe let's say four. So that'd be about $400, uh, plus maybe a cabin air filter change, maybe an air, air filter change as well. So you're looking at about five, Five to six hundred bucks anyway you're not very far off from what this would be even in a brand new warrantied vehicle just for routine maintenance so i happen to be maybe a little higher because i had this odor thing done which i know how to do now otherwise i wouldn't have really had to do anything on this other than buy wiper blades so that gives that uh total um expenses here and then these are some of the other things that i've bought so i'm not not counting this in in my operating costs here my operating costs here are um uh, are the this is three and a half cents under three and a half cents per kilometer to do that kind of miles so that's the overall outcome from the cost here so you can compare that to your own vehicle okay and again these are these expenses here are optional these are things like about like the mountain pass kit i bought a set of winter tires i had the the hitch uh, bought and, and installed some stuff like that things that I've purchased for the vehicle that I've had either installed or a lot of stuff I've done myself but I have purchased some bigger ticket items for the vehicle uh, roof rack things like that so that's what some of that is um, a lot of the, the accessories that you saw I've, I've been donated or I've done on promo or heavily discounted whatever so I've spent about that on the vehicle to make it nicer or change the suspension is half of that over half of that money is the suspension change uh, because I felt that that was something needed. So that's the big ticket item. That and, and the hitch are the two big ticket items there. Now remember, um, I flashed earlier about what my what I paid for my vehicle and then what my current resale value is. And, it, and it's about the same or even more now, the resale value, than what it is when I paid for the vehicle. So even if I say it's at par, I haven't lost really any money in depreciation. If any, it's going to be extremely small, but in probably most cases, the way this used EV market is, which is crazy, I've probably made money on my vehicle, which is totally against the norm. It's hardly ever happens. Uh, and EVs are just that wanted that people are able to charge more and get premium pricing for them. I Again, I did comparison shopping on AutoTrader and over around $70,000 for a same vehicle of mine with 50,000 kilometers. Uh, and uh, that's what they're asking. I paid 65 for it. So you do the math, you know, plus your tax and everything. I, I'm, I'm ahead of the game. So from an operating cost, I'm, I've saved a ton of money versus an internal combustion vehicle. I'm not factoring in a car payments or insurance payments because no matter what vehicle you buy, you're going to have those. And they're going to vary based on the vehicle, based on your insurability and all the factors that go into that. So I'm not going to bring up those numbers because they're all going to be relatively similar. But maintenance costs and operating costs here, and you can again talk about the resale value, are very important facts that that you know that keep relatively similar. 
So I hope this is of uh, interest uh, and, and makes sense to you. And one other thing I'll point out is, and even on these charging costs here, when I'm calculating it, I'm using a rate of 11 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. And that's actually probably slightly high because I off peak pretty well 99% of the time. Very rarely I will charge during uh, a weekday. Um, and our off peak is seven at night to seven in the morning on weekdays. And then it's all the time from Friday, seven at night till Monday, seven in the morning. During the weekend, it's, it's the off peak rate. It's one rate. So I'm always charging on the lowest rate, which is actually eight and a half cents a kilowatt. But then there's other fees that are part of our electricity bills. There's, there's monthly base fees. There's delivery charges. There's some other rates which are affected by usage. So it goes up and down. So I've kind of done a blend and figured out about 11 and a half cents. And when I phoned my electricity provider to ask them, is that a, 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 an approximate number? They even said I'm probably a little high with 11 and a half cents. So I'm erring on the side of caution. Here, uh, here, folks. So the takeaway is that your your EV charging costs could even be less than what I'm showing here. Could be could be less, and it probably is in reality less. But I'm aiming a little higher, just to show you that EVs have a significant char uh, savings if, you, if especially if you can charge at home. If you have to fast charge all the time, then you have to really work out the numbers. You've got to sit down and got to work out what the rates are, work out what it would cost you based on your mileage and everything. And, and that's a little bit different scenario. It can work for some people. It might be too expensive for others. It really is going to depend on you and your habits and where you are. All right, so Joe, quickly some more information, some driving impressions, I guess, on my Model 3 as I'm doing this two-year review. Um, so just quickly, as I said in the opening parts, um, this car's been great. I've had no issues with it. I just get in and drive. I, again, I have uh, now over 51,000 kilometers on it. Um, still comfortable, uh, still quiet, uh, relatively. I mean, there are quieter uh, vehicles on the market. So because I get a lot of EVs to drive, I can compare. So there are quieter ones, but this is pretty quiet. Now, uh, easy to drive and just get in and go. I love the software updates. I've had many, many OTAs over these two years already uh, two plus years and a lot of new features have come so again that's one of the great things about the over the air updates is getting those new features the car is better is has more things uh, that i can do with the vehicle more functionality than it did when i got it and that's one of the main things about tesla that still has to, to some degree a competitive advantage. Uh, other manufacturers are now catching up. They're all providing OTAs. They're still fairly in their infancy, um, but they are starting to come out. Rivian, as an example, just did a, an over-the-air update, uh, uh, bringing some new features, something called the knee feature, kneel feature or knee feature, something like that. So um, <clears throat> there are they're catching on, which is great because the investment you make, this expensive investment you make in these EVs, Will, will only get better with time. So this Tesla has, again, as you saw, I did a lot of options, but driving wise, it's a great car, it handles like it's on rails, um, still a very, very nice car to drive. Absolutely joy, uh, you know, the visibility is great in it. The comfort, you know, especially with that suspension change for me is much better. You saw the seats, everything is holding up quite nicely. You're not hearing any squeaks or rattles. It's pretty quiet in here. I'm doing 70 uh, kilometers an hour, a little bit more on this country road, and it's pretty nice, pretty nice and quiet. So again, for two years, I can't complain about this vehicle, again, other than the suspension being stiff for me, for my liking, but that's personal preference. The vehicle itself has been great. So uh, yeah, I hope you, you've enjoyed this. Now, let me get back and uh, just do a final wrap up on this. All right, and that's it for this edition of my Tesla Timeout, my two year review of my 2020 Model 3 long range Tesla product. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Sorry if I went into a, it was a long video and a lot of detail, but I thought it was important just to go through, especially the costing and my overall feel. It's been a couple of years. You folks know I review a lot of vehicles. So I really wanted to kind of put this in context and perspective. Absolutely love my Model 3. Would I trade it for something else? No way, I absolutely love it. Are there better cars out there? Yeah, I think so. But it depends what you're looking for, right? Some are more luxurious. Teslas have great battery management. Could be a little better, but hey, it's a great product. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please email me. You guys know how to reach me in the contact information. And uh, again, you know, thanks very much for watching. Hopefully this has helped you. And until the next time, I will see you when I see you. Everybody take care and thanks for watching.